Lord be with you. And also with you. We're all sitting in our normal Sunday morning seats. <laughs> if you wanted to, uh, we had about 15 people last night. They all shifted closer to the front and one side. So you might think about that. Um, we are trying to shift to a new setting. Uh, someone expressed some difficulty with the setting last, <coughs> last week. We only changed two pieces of music last week, and that goes for this week. And that is the Kyrie and the Gospel Acclamation. The Gospel Acclamation was probably the most difficult. When we come to that, we're going to have David sing it through once. Is that correct, David? Maybe. Da David, by the way, we're glad you're here after your harrowing experience yesterday. David drove into a ditch and tore the bumpers off his car. There's no more to the story than that, but that's, David, we're, we're glad you made it through. Uh, you're going to hear in the prayers the name Gerald Brown. Gerald and George Ann have been members of this congregation for a long time. And uh, Gerald is in the late stages of cancer and uh, went home from the hospital this week on hospice. So um, it's the first time we'll hear his name. Dorothy Lokensgaard also is in the prayers. Dorothy had to go back to the nursing home, Christian Healthcare East over by the East Sands, uh, to deal with the same issues she's had with congestive heart failure. Our gospel text is a follow-up of um, Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now Jesus explains what it means to be the Messiah, that he must suffer and die. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. The, the brief order of confession and forgiveness is found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us out of, captiv out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. By, the, by water and the Spirit, God gives us a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offsprings after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarah your wife, you shall not call her Sari, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. You who fear the Lord, give praise, all you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends 
ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. A reading from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Ab Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hope against hope. He believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him in righteousness. Now the words, it was...
could guide us. Those who want their life, who save their life, must lose it. Lose it in a life with Christ. An example of that is given by um, James Richard, James Richard Lehman. He uh, tells the story of a young woman by the name of Anne. Anne was in her 30s when he met her. She came from a working class family in Australia. They didn't consider themselves poor, but her father worked two jobs in order to support the family. Anne went to college and her parents said, Anne, we'll pay for one year, then you're on your own. And she not only finished college, but she went on and became a medical doctor. Upon graduation from medical school, she joined an order of nuns. And there, she decided to practice medicine in a, in a town in Africa. And um, that's when James Richard Lehman met her. And he said, why? Because he spent a day with her and uh, the day began with 10 women, 10 to 12 women. He said every day, 10 to 12 women would show up at the clinic having given birth during the night. They had eight beds. So they'd share beds or one would sleep on, rest on the floor. And they could stay there eight hours and then they had to go for the next batch to show up in the morning. And when she was done tending her rounds, checking on these women and their babies, she would then go to the clinic where she would see, on average, 200 children suffering from malaria. The only thing in, the, in her office that they had was a microscope and one drug to take care of all the stages of malaria that people would come to see her at. So that's when James Richard Lehman said to her, asked her the question, why? It could have served and become, uh, have a prestigious career and, and make a good living. And she said, when I graduated from medical school, I looked at the needs of the world and I was overwhelmed. And I thought, if I'm going to help at all, I have to get me straight. And she said, knowing there's a power greater than me that forgives me gives me the power to live by grace. I realized that's what I needed. And then, if I was going to be of any use to anyone, I realized I needed help. And joining the community of nuns, they would always be there to help. I needed strength beyond myself. And finally, Received the community, I got myself together, received community, and I knew anything I would do, I would need the power of God. Anne understood the life of the cross. We can do that. We don't have to do something so dramatic as become a nun. We can do it every day when we care for our families, when we care for people that we work with. 
every day. Jesus said, and this is good news, if you want to gain your life, you must lose it. Lose it in him. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we can our faith. I believe, in God. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord God, you poured out your life on the cross for the sake of the world. 
Pour out your love through your church and make the community of welcome and grace to all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You stretched out your hand and created the heavens. We praise you for the sun, moon, and stars that mark our days and fill us with awe. Hear us, O oh God. You rule over the nations, uphold the work of international relief organizations, aid workers, and all who strive for peace in troubled parts of the world. We are thankful that Liberia has reopened its borders and relaxed curfews, sign that the threat of Ebola is diminishing. At home, we are saddened by the murders and death that happened in Tyrone and the death of our state auditor. Hear us, O God. You fulfill your promises. Draw near to those who call on you. Send your healing presence to Gerald Brown, Pamela Sinquini, Kelly Cowell, Gary Coffey, Mickey Fuller, the family of Cal Fuller, Tiffany Giles, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Ron Lemke, Dorothy Lokensgard, Pat Morrison, Officer Pearson, Michelle Powell, Jan Snath, Mike Shanks, Louise Snyder, Wayne Sproul, Mary Thomas, Cynthia Tulin, Janice Trotter, and Ed Wood. Are there any others? Keep us faithful to you so we join with those who have gone before us. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Wiley Dinas, Lucy Knox, Kevin Lowe, and Joe West. Lo hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our provider, fed, not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is
is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who bids us turn to you and prepare for the Paschal Feast. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world, even as we sing. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for, gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen, come Lord Jesus, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, read your spirit. We will also, um, rem uh, uh, just a reminder that we do have midweek Lenten worship on Wednesday noon and at seven. I also need about two people who are willing to uh, use the snowblower sometime today and clean off all the walks all the way around our complex and over to Safe Haven. It's, it's pretty easy to use that snowblower. So um, anyway, so just keep that in mind. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. Amen. Guided by the God, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to God.